Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Sivatan Kamani, an integration technical architect. Today I am going to present uh, uh, how to use scatter gather pattern effectively in MuleSoft. In some situation, uh, you might need to use uh, the same payload for multiple workflows. Uh, and these workflows sometimes could be mutually exclusive. When I say mutually exclusive, it means uh, uh, one workflow doesn't depend on another workflow or uh, one doesn't need to use the response obtained from another. So in such situation you can use a scatter gather pattern in Mule, Mule Soft either in Mule 3 or Mule 4 uh, and it can greatly reduce the performance. Suppose you have uh, five workflows and you can uh, reduce the performance uh, or duration to one fifth. So let's see how it works. So uh, I have prepared a, a simple mule flow with a HTTP listener and a logger which could uh, display the incoming payload access. So I have a SOAP UI tool to uh, trigger the HTTP listener. So let me trigger it. So uh, the JSON contains uh, two parameters. One is first number, another one is second number. Both are integers. And I'm able to see the uh, payload as a response here. So now let's uh, use uh, uh, scatter gather. So under core you have a scatter gather component and uh, uh, normally you don't need to do anything and uh, uh, let's have variable component. And uh, we can consider these variables as uh, uh, workflow streams. For simplicity and demo purpose, I only have a set variable which you can replace it as a entire uh, a subflow reference. Let's update the content of the set variable. So in the variable, we are going to use uh, the variable uh, result. And I'm going to use the expression uh, payload dot uh, first number plus second number so uh, these are the uh, JSON parameters that we have in the input so we are uh, doing this addition here so let's say uh, there are three different requirements one to find the sum difference and the last one is to find the product of two numbers so we are going to process this uh, 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 not sequentially but we are going to process uh, in parallel and uh, let's do that uh, for the other two. I'm going to use uh, the same variable name and let's use uh, to find the difference and uh, same variable and this time we are going to use the product. So let's save this and finally we can uh, transform this result into a JSON format by using transformation, drag and drop. Uh, here instead of Java, we can use JSON. And uh, we are going to use uh, result. Let's save this and run and uh, investigate what the response is uh, obtained. So you can see here the response is uh, an aggregated value. You can note uh, that the, the resultant is an array where uh, MuleSoft aggregated these three. Uh, uh, one is the sum, another one is the difference, and uh, the last one is the product value. So let's see how uh, we got this particular response. Let's investigate what's happening here. So when we supply uh, the payload, um, the MuleSoft effectively copies and uh, sends one in each of these workflows. So these uh, workflows, uh, in, in our case, it's simply a set variable, but you can imagine you have a subflow reference. So all the subflow uh, are called uh, in parallel and start running uh, in parallel simultaneously. And uh, in case of uh, the variable being the same used in all the workflow, the mule flow takes them and combines them effectively as an array. So that's what's happening here. The result uh, is treated as a JSON and the result variable 
is the combination of the results obtained from all the workflow. Now we are going to see a different use case. In, in this particular use case, uh, we have got all the response that's similar. So that's why we prefer to have the identical flow variable in all uh, workflows. But now imagine uh, three workflows are different and they are going to uh, give you three different heterogeneous data. So in that case, you would need to prefer, uh, say, different uh, flow variables. One is var1, var2, and var3. So at that time, uh, you would get uh, So now you will be able to handle these uh, variables uh, differently according to the workflow requirement. Let's save and see what the responses received. Now you have uh, the values stored in three different uh, flow variables. So uh, splitter gather is very flexible and uh, in both scenarios we are reducing the response time into one third because these uh, three components or workflows are called in parallel. Hope you enjoyed and uh, found this video useful. Thanks for watching this and uh, please suggest and feel free to provide your comments in the comment section below. And soon I'll come up with more interesting topics. Thank you. Bye.